Oh, hello everybody. I was just playing a bit of It's Harplifter. Um, it's battery operated. Virtual Daggering converted it for me. Obviously, we, we lack a mains power supply out here. Uh, so we have to go and charge it up in the town. Wherever the town is. Anyway, what we need to do is fertilize this field. Both of the crops. I've got a plan. We're going to use our fertilizer spreader on this area here, which is not yet germinated. And then hopefully we're gonna buy a brand new sprayer for this area here, the wheat field. Here it is, so this cropped up on ModHub just before I started recording this episode. I'll put the link down below, but it looks fantastic because uh, it's got a nine meter working width, it's not expensive, and what's well, John Deere, many people will love that. Uh, track width, yep, there you go, so we can change that if we want to. I think I'll probably just put it on the widest just so I don't flip it over, because <laughs> I have a habit of flipping it over. And we don't really have tracks, so yep, we'll just go with number four. Um, but we're going to be buying this later. Oh, it's nice that you can actually configure a different color for the tank. I think I'll probably stick with the yellow. Looks pretty good. But yeah, um, yeah. first things first, we need to jump onto our tractor. This one just over here. I have tidied the yard up a bit. It was very messy. Okay, the Kramer, KL200. The Virtual Dagwin has been keeping the fertilizer spreader safe for us. Should have quite a bit of fertilizer in it, unless Virtual Dagwin's used it. Yep, 57%. So obviously with the spray we have to buy liquid fertilizer, which is not cheap. But I'm hoping it's going to last quite a long time. And it's probably a fairly similar price anyway per acre as granular fertilizer. Okay, so there we go, we're applying. Make sure it is working. Yep, looks to be. Perfect. And well, this is the reason why it's worth using this machine on this area, because we can actually see where we have and haven't been. But on that area, it would be pretty tricky. Plus, it would take a very long time. So having a nine meter sprayer is just gonna make everything so much easier and faster. Luckily, the wind is blowing in the opposite direction. Oh, can I do this without having to turn it off? Looks like I might be able to. Oh, very good. So they both have their own benefits. As with everything, positives and negatives. Uh, everything has a positive and everything has a negative. Well, most things. <laughs> um, can't think of anything off the top of my head which is only negative. Like, why would you buy a machine which is only negative? Because even like if you had a super high spec, massive combine harvester, you would think it's all positive, but actually, for this farm, not necessarily. If we have to go to a field uh, through the trees, it won't actually fit. So, uh, yeah, it's um, it just goes to show that all machines have their own uses. They're good for some things and bad for others. Okay, so I will finish off this area, and then we can go over to the store we can configure our new sprayer, uh, load up some liquid fertilizer, and then we can get all of the wheat fertilized. And that won't be it done, but it will be the majority done. Uh, there is a very small strip which has not been done at all. So that will have to be done again when the crop has grown a bit more. But that's fine. It'll only take about, I don't know, one minute, two minutes. It's a tiny strip. And there we go. It's going to be nice to use two different machines, two different tractors, two different implements. It'd be good to compare them, although they're not really comparable, they're different things. Right, so we still have 51% in there, barely used anything at all. Was that about, what was that, 6%-ish? 
uh, very, very good. And we will be using this again in the future. Like when we are doing a small area or an area which has not germinated, this would be perfect. As you can see, we do still have quite a large area of grass, which we're doing nothing with. This will probably end up being the yard, but there is an area behind the tent there, all up there. I'm going to have to do something with that. I think it's going to be best to try and eradicate the weeds and then mow it. And I know you don't have to kill off the weeds, but really, I don't want to be mowing it with weeds in. It'll look terrible, plus it would be probably quite hard to see where we have and haven't been. Okay, uh, turn this tractor off here, and we'll jump into the John Deere. Detach the trailer. And I will see you over at the store. Into the sprayers. So, um, this is it, as I've already shown you. Um, I was going to go for a Continental. But I've just realised it's £1,200 more. We can't really afford to do that. Um, although it would have been nice to have a different wheel type. Quite sharp edges. But yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with track width 4. £5,850. And we'll buy. Lovely. Now for the liquid fertiliser. This will come in a, an IBC. Just the one, that is still £3,200. It does leave us with 661 There we go, so we've filled it to 1,000 litres and we do have still half in the IBC. It's a 2,000 litre IBC. So this should go a long way, although it's a bit of an expense to begin with. Should be very good. So once this has been sprayed, once I've applied it, uh, we're going to rest. We'll go into September, see what other things are going on. Oh, very nice. Right, so there is our 9 meter working width. I'll just align the sprayer with the edge of the field. And off we go. So it looks like we can do this at 10 miles per hour. 9 meters at 10 miles per hour, we'll get it done in no time. And it looks good too, because it matches this tractor obviously with it being a John Deere. It's our John Deere fleet. Well, it's a growing fleet. We've just started to grow. But I think our next tractor probably won't be a John Deere. It's nice to have a bit of variety. The only reason why we got a John Deere this time was because it was, well, the only thing which we could afford. There was the 1630s, well, which I would have loved to have had. Uh, I'd love to have got that, but this was uh, very, very similar in price, and it offered quite a bit more. Okay, so yeah, hopefully I'm not missing anything there. There might be a slight bit of overlap, but that's better than missing. Yep, there is a bit of uh, missing there. Not easy. I could put tram lines in, but then it would be very destructive. Okay, so we are getting on very well. I thought I was making a bit of a mess, but I've just checked the map, and it actually looks pretty good. Because this is a new extension, we do have the peppered look. I think it's because of the weeds and stuff before, or the grass. Um, but everywhere down here is looking much better, because this, uh, this has been ploughed twice. So hopefully next year, this will all be a consistent colour. 
think that's what it must be. It must be the grass or the weeds from when we ploughed it up. Um, so yeah, that will change. It is the weeds, yeah, because the where, where you have the grass, where you plough, you get the first application of fertiliser. But obviously, it's not all covered with grass because the weeds have taken the space of uh, of some of the grass that was growing there. Okay, probably already been here. But consumption is good. We've only used 20% of the whole IBC. 40% of what we have. Uh, yeah, we should be able to put a, a second application over this piece. But the lighty colour will remain, because that is the strip I mentioned. That will need to be done once the crop has grown a bit more. In fact, it could be done tomorrow, which is going to be in a few minutes' time. Because we're going to rest, we're going to go into September. Uh, yeah, it's working, just need to head over here a bit more. But overall, very impressed. I do like the mod. Nice and handy. Uh, so we don't have to start it up again straight away. It's just over here. Yep. And just stick basically up against the edge of the wheat crop. We're waiting for the tomatoes to become a really good price because we do have quite a lot. In fact, it would be good to start loading the tomatoes up. Um, the only problem is it is going to be January before the tomatoes are a really good price, so there is a chance that the trailer will be required. Don't want to have to unload it again, <laughs> that would be annoying. Okay, right, well, I think we're done. We are done. Just quickly show you that in more detail. So there's the strip. The peppered look obviously doesn't look very good, but it'll be fine. It will disappear next year. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I think next time I'm over at the store with a front loader, I'll bring the IBC back. We do need to buy some pallet forks anyway. Getting a good collection of machinery. Okay. Looking good. Uh, right, so yeah, I am going to go and rest. Let's just see these tomatoes. Looking pretty good. Again, I do need to get a pallet fork. Should have enough water. Pretty sure we do. Yep. Because we did fill it up yesterday. Back into the tent. Trying to play any more harp lifter. Good game. If you enjoy lifting harps. Um, right, so we're going to go into the next day, 9 o'clock. Now these crops are probably going to look quite different. Mm-hmm. Well, it has grown a bit. And the oat crop would have germinated. Different shade of green. Looks thinner. Looks more like grass. Um, but yeah, very good. So we actually could do the second application, but I'm going to leave it for now. I think if, because we've literally just seen the first application go on. Uh, it probably look a bit weird. Hmm. It appears to be raining. Interesting. Well, I said before this area here wants to have some attention um, it's gonna be tricky to know exactly what to do with it we could just plow it up uh, we could make another field uh, which I'm quite tempted to do actually I don't really want to keep it well what we could do actually is we could plow it up and then drill it with grass because um, then we'd get the first application of fertilizer from plowing grass and then we could just spray the next application or spread the, the next one um, I think it's probably going to be better than doing any kind of mulching or herbicide because, yeah, it's all going to cost quite a bit of money to get rid of these. It would be nice to keep a very high quality bit of grass. So yeah, I think that is going to be the best plan of action for today. We don't want to limit ourselves to combinable crops only. And yeah, we're not going to load the tomatoes up onto the trailer yet. It's just too far. It is January when the price is super good. Well, it might be December, it can vary. Lovely weather. Good for the crops though, very good. So I'm just gonna lower the plow. Uh, let's get going with it and see where we end up. Probably on the other side. That's what usually happens. But yeah, it's, it is a substantial area. It's gonna be good to have this as grass because uh, then the money which we get from harvesting the wheat and the oats and the straw money and the tomato money 
could all go towards getting some haymaking equipment, or maybe even we could do silage. I think silage bells might be good. Hello, tree. There is a log there. I'll have to get that picked up. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be quite a large area, so we're just making a start. We don't have to finish it today. There is the track. Do I own up to the track? No, that's... That is the, bo the boundary just there. We don't want to go beyond it. Yes, hopefully I haven't gone beyond it too much there, because I know it's like a leeway. It might just go over it. Oh, no, don't do that. It's too close. I think it has slightly gone over it. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be good. It will be nice to do some grass work. The big arable field just there is going to be turned into just one field next year, so we'll just have one crop in it. And although it looks like we are going to be ploughing pretty much up to this one, it won't be because it's going to be grass anyway, so it will just look like it is now, but without the weeds, and much higher quality. I only have a big problem with putting two combinable crops together. Yes, I need to get it. I need to get these weeds, but without destroying the wheat. It's going to be quite tricky. I might have to get that final piece when we plough the field again, but it's fine. We'll just extend that field by a foot. Blimey. Oh, I must have... Yes, there we go. Yeah, the speed limit remover tool... Um, as I said before, it's the tool which we do use. We are allowed to use it. We always have done since Series 1. But more for time lapses, not for real-time gameplay. Okay, so this is where it gets a bit uneven because Virtual dagger has been messing around. But we should be okay. It would be good to get rid of that big shrub, actually, if we can do. And that's the good thing about it when it comes to grass. You don't really have to worry about being messy with the plough because it's all going to be turned back to grass again. So <laughs> you won't actually see the mess. You'll just see where the weeds are. Right, so that is our area marked out. Uh, I, yeah, I can't deny it, it's going to be a huge job. But that's the good thing as well. You don't have to do it every time. We just have to do this once. We'll just get some good grass in. Don't really want to be going up that way. It's going to make it too tricky. And eventually we'll be able to get a reversible plow, which will, again will make it look better. Because I am not really using this type of plow the way it should be used. I'm just getting by. Okay. So yeah, I'll see how we get on. Obviously it would be nice to get this area completed today, but yeah, it's pretty big.
getting very, very close to Virtual Dagwin's hut. He'll be bouncing around in there. In fact, I think I might have hit it. We're getting very close. It's also turned out to be a really nice day. Very close to completion. Yeah. Uh, looks like I managed to somehow plow underneath his hut. Well. You can't say I'm not thorough. Yeah, it says that the um, weather type is cloud. It is cloudy. But it's also very sunny. So, not bad. Started off wet finished off dry. So I'm just going to finish off and then I think we're going to probably leave it until next time uh, when we can get the seed drill into here. We can put the grass in. Yes, despite me mentioning this last time I still hit it. Let's pop it there for now. And also once we have finished this area I'll show you the fertilizing map and we should have a peppered Actually, no, it probably won't be peppered, but we will have the first application. I think the peppering only really shows up on the second application. For some reason. I'm, I'm not too sure why. I might be wrong. But it's going well. So close to finishing, I do have to go over the hill. The brow of this hill. Just to get that final piece. But it's looking good. So I'm on the lookout for some low cost grass equipment. I think there is actually quite a good selection. Uh, it's really not a difficult crop to be uh, working with. Not like the root crops. Although, yeah, we did do very well to do sugar beet as one of our first crop types. All thanks to that one harvester and planter. But I'm certainly looking for a round baler, not a conventional baler. Certainly not a big square baler. We don't have the power for one. And they're also very expensive. Uh, now I've said that, we'll probably get a big square baler, but now I'm, I'm, I'd be extremely surprised. <laughs> we are definitely looking for a round baler. Okay, I will switch off the uh, create field or allow field mode. So I don't plough up an area which I don't want to plough up. Take a look at our brand new field on the minimap. Yep, we've got some, uh, well, a variety of uh, different colours there. Uh, but it's the fertilising I want to see. That's been ploughed. There we go. So yeah, no peppering. Uh, pretty sure the peppering will turn up though when we do the second application. But this looks really good. In fact, it looks like one massive field. So, really utilising the uh, land that we have. Except for this piece. I will have to do some works down here. Oh look, more tomatoes. This is going to be a good chunk of our income. We do have a few months to wait but even so, our sun-dried tomatoes. That, that's the excuse I'm using for leaving them outside. The ones at the bottom will rot but <laughs> the, the people who are buying them only see the top crate. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed it and until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.